Super Media Runners. Welcome to Super Media Runners. We... <laughs> Welcome to Super Media Runners. We run the media to you. I'm Jarek. And I'm Junior. Happy holidays to everybody. We are going to do our holiday movie tier list uh, for the holidays. I don't know how else to explain this. <laughs> but we're going to start out with 10 movies to the, this week. And then next week we're going to do 10 more movies. And we're going to put it on this ranked tier list that uh, we're going to display for the holidays. This will be a good way for people to see these movies if they haven't seen them already. And... You know, just kind of reminisce on some of the Christmas movies that have come out. Wait, holiday movies. I'm sorry. I can't keep... We can't say Christmas. We have to say holidays. All right? So, dinner, holiday movies. Don't call them Christmas movies. Uh, so, the first movie... <laughs> the first movie is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um, 2000. Uh, directed by Han uh, Ron Howard. I want to say this is... I want to say an S-tier movie. What do you think, Jenner? S-tier? Double S tier, yep. <clears throat> Part of my this childhood, the, our childhood. Yeah, this is one of the big, I want to say the one of the biggest Christmas movies to ever come out. And I think it, it, it didn't, it, I feel like for what it was, it didn't have to be this, like, production-wise, it didn't have to be this fucking expensive. The, you know, they had the animated cartoon that was so popular, and then it just became this big live-action thing. Uh, just imagine now. I don't think they would have ever made this a live-action movie. I think they would, you know, especially now that that Illuminations Grinch movie came out, I'm just like, oh, gross. It's like, they, they, they don't, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have so much confidence in a live-action Dr. Seuss movie. But this one really did bring a lot of practical and cgi effects especially with jim carrey having to like you know sit in a makeup chair for hours and feeling like he's he's gonna go crazy he almost quit because of that i think it, it, for what it was it was hilarious it was it worked and i think as an adaptation it's a horrible adaptation i i, I want to say a lot no. of people if if they are a hundred percent for the book you are gonna fucking hate this i thought this works in so many different ways that the book didn't. Because think about it. This is adapting a child's book that like, you can read in two minutes. This movie could be like... Th the way that this movie was stretched out, I think they really, really just kind of added more lore and backstory to the Grinch. You know, why he hates Christmas. And it kind of adds more effect to it. I want to say this had a probably a better impact on an, on the ending compared to the, you know, the cartoon and compared to the book. And I think that's, that's the best way that they could have done this. Well, to add to your little rant there, the only way that I feel like this was successful was because of Jim Carrey. <laughs> like he, mm -hmm. I, I don't know any other actor that could portray the Grinch as Grinch than Jim Carrey. He carried the movie. Um, like you said, the production and shit, like, it was, to me, that this this movie is, is, is a masterpiece. S tier. And Jim -tier. did carry this, carry this movie. Jim so. did carry. <laughs> <laughs> he, he grinched his way to the top. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right. Uh, second movie here is uh, the Santa Claus Two. Are you wondering why I picked the sequel? Uh, I was never partial to the first one. I think I, I I watched the first one growing up as a kid, but I, I I don't remember too much of it. And I think the second one is to me was was a lot more was a lot stronger because it added more to the Santa Claus mythos, and I just thought that was fun. It just was more fun to to watch. You know him interact with all the you know the. Uh, what do you call it? The holiday, like the the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, I like, so, and it's such a star-studded cast. I liked Santa Claus too because it had build it built more that the the first Santa Claus paved, and it did it in a way where it was fun, like having him have like this clone doll that is also played by Tim Allen is is just. It, it, he just looks like this big rubber like Santa Claus clone and he's, he has to face off with him because, you know, after he, you know, basically tried to riz this girl to be like Mrs. Claus and kind of force her, indoctrinate her into the Santa Claus lore. It's just, <laughs> it's just such an interesting movie. I, I just, I can't, I can't get enough of it. And 
Apparently, Tim Allen accidentally burned his head on the Santa suit during filming, which, you know, added to the authenticity of his reaction. So it's another little tidbit of things. But I, I think Tim Allen is really dedicated in the, in these movies. And it's just it's just fun seeing him play off as Santa Claus. And I, I, I every time we watch this movie on Christmas, I, I, I just smile. Yeah, no, yeah. The second one, Santa Claus 2, for me, it really is more wholesome and the story overall is much better but i prefer the first one only because it made me laugh more and you know it's the first one so it's like it it holds a special place in in my little snow globe heart so so what do you want to rate this one i mean we have grinch s tier that that's that's our yeah, that's, that's our ceiling tiers i would either put it b or a maybe Maybe B. I think it's. I think this is a good B movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's as much as movie. praise as I give it, I will say that yeah, people probably remember the first one as more than the second one. I I still love the second one a little bit more than the first one, but yeah, I, I think I'll put it in B just because yeah. we, if we're hearing it's a Grinch, I probably watch Grinch like five more times more than the Santa Claus too. Who that? Who that? All right, we got the Polar Express. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, that crazy motion capture technology. That's that's where it all led to this. It led to this uncanny valley of it's not even that bad. I, I don't <laughs> think I don't think it's that bad. Like, don't do you think it looks that bad when you when you watched it as a kid, not when watching it now? I mean, I, I watched it like last year. It's not that it's it's not even that gross looking. It's just like some of the emotions, if you like pause it, it just looks like it looks like shit. It looks really scary. But other than that, I I can't see any problems with it. I mean, you're adapting a book. If you wanted to say that it gave, it got the look and the feel of the book, I think it really nailed that. I think the performances, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't find anyone else besides Tom Hanks to play the conductor, so it was cool. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. But uh, well, what do you think? I, I don't, I mean, the last time I remember watching the Polar Express was probably like sixth grade. And, you know, it was just like another reason not to do any schoolwork. So I, you know, I was always down to watch it. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd fuck around with my friends anyways in the middle of the movie. But, um, yeah, I mean, when I was younger, yeah, I'm sure it, it was a good movie. Like, everything was, was, you know, visually appealing. But now, now that I've seen, like, snippets and, and pictures, like, it really is uncanny. It, it 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 really does look like shit, NGL, and I agree with you on the aspect that it feels like a good like the the feeling of the movie is good, but the visuals, I mean, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it like engineered like the way towards like like you said motion capture and you know where where uh, movies are animated how how they're animated now so i guess it it's up there but yeah uh, it's i in the end i think you really need to watch like the trailer or the beginning of the movie where the the train comes through the house basically like th like the front doorstep of the house that is still like visually audibly incredible i i, I I, I think the first time, like, especially if you watch, like, when we watched it, we, we went on a field trip to see this movie, like, at, in, a, at an AMC, I think. That's how big of a deal it was, because we read the book, <laughs> and then it's like, it's like our teachers hyped us up. It's like the teachers were part of the marketing material. They're like, hey, uh, we're going to get a paycheck from uh, Robert Zemeckis if we, uh, if we, if we read the book to the kids, and then we take them out to go see the movie. So let's do it, you know? <laughs> I don't even remember reading the book. <laughs> No, they read it. They read it to us in school, and then they told uh, us, "All right, get in the school bus. We're all gonna go fucking watch this movie. The watch the movie now." And I'm like, "Wait, there's a movie to this now?" I'm like, "Holy shit, I'm hyped. This is crazy. Like, wow, this was very well timed." So yeah, that when it came out, I was just like, and then it, you're watching it and as a kid, and you're in like the the first surround sound systems in the in the theater, and then it was just like fucking eight millimeter or whatever the fuck, you know? And it's just like, <laughs> whoa. This is so cool. And then you watch it on Netflix and it's like, ah, it's all right. It's not the not the best looking, but it's 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 pretty good still. But uh, uh yeah. I, I don't know. I I want to put this at B tier with Santa Claus 2. I don't think you can go any wrong uh, with that. I, I put it I put it C. 
No, I refuse. Can you? I'm gonna. Can you just grab? Right. Like, I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> slowly rip it up to B. But you know what? Can we? Can we like put it in the in like in the middle of B and C? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put it in the middle. We'll put it in the middle. <laughs> right. The middle lines. It's like climbing its way, but it's it's still struggling. Yeah. It's okay. All so right. our next uh our next movie is uh one of my favorites, Krampus. It's funny because there's like, d have you ever looked up the movie Krampus and it's just like there's 50 other like shitty, like not shitty, but like, like clearly direct to DVD movies. There's, there's Krampus the Reckoning, uh, cr Rare Exports, Krampus Unleashed, Krampus the Christmas Devil, Krampus the Devil re re Returns, and <laughs> Mother Krampus. There's just so many Krampuses, but this is Krampus, uh, 2015 Krampus. Uh, it's available on Peacock if anybody wants to watch it. Directed by Michael Dowtry, who made one of our favorite Godzilla, recent Godzilla movies, and he made Trick or Treat. It's just, it, it's a good time. This is, it's, it's like, I feel like it's back to basics when you watch a movie like this, where it's just all practical effects. It's just so much shit going on, and it's so much fun. It's, it has a pretty good cast. It's a dark comedy, but it, I feel like it's more, it, it is pretty, like, dark. Like, it, it doesn't, like, hold pull back any punches especially because there's like kids in it like kids do die in this kids do technically get eaten in this and it's just like there it, it it doesn't pull any punches and i think that's that's the kind of like christmas uh horror movie that i think we should be you know be familiar with like you know movies like black christmas or uh freaking what, what just came out uh this uh, the remake to like uh man what's the name of it Sil no, Silent Night is an action movie. My bad. No, forget about that. That's just coming out. But yeah, I, I think overall, this is a good, like, enjoyable movie if you like the aesthetics of Christmas and the aesthetics of horror. So I really, really want to say, like, mm, I don't know. Uh, what, what do you think of it, honestly? I, I, I want to get a good ranking on this. Uh, for my money, I'd probably put it, I'd probably put it in B, just because it's like, one of the only horror Christmassy or excuse me, holiday movies out there. So yeah, I feel like it's a confident B. Um, like you said, the action, kind of the darkness that it, it portrays is is unique. And the ending is a, is a, is a twist. So yeah, it's I'd a, probably put it. I'd not a lot of people understand the ending. A ending. I remember I had to look it up on. I looked it up on Reddit, and everybody was just like, "I don't. I, I still don't understand the <laughs> ending." So the like, I'm not gonna spoil it, but it, it for me, it's like, oh wait, so is did all of it happen or did it not happen? I, I you know, spoiler, but it did it all happen or did it not happen? I think that the whole point of it was it's supposed to be like a hard lesson. It's like one of those uh, brothers grim fairy tales. This is supposed to be like a hard lesson for you to learn or some shit. So I think. Yeah, but I think B's a, B's fair. B's fair. All right, cool. Okay, so we got the holiday. Or no, no, sorry. You know what? Let's just do the holiday really quick. It's one of Jack Black's first movies. It's too, you know directed by Nancy Myers. It's just a fun movie. I just think. Wait, is is that that the holiday? Yeah, the holiday. Wait, which one's the holiday? Is the holiday the one with the fucking? <laughs> forgot about that stupid movie yeah this is the one with jack black and jude law kate winslet cameron diaz okay that's what i thought i was like wait what movie is this yeah romantic romantic comedy film uh during the heart yeah i let's just let's just put this in c or no let's put this in b please because it's i think jack black did really does sell this he's he's pretty good in this movie and i, I think this was one of his first movies when you know his one of his breakout movies so yeah not gonna just, lie never seen it but you Jack Black's in it, so I'll, I'll probably watch it this uh, this holiday. Um, I'm gonna go with your uh, judgment here, so we'll go ahead and put it in B tier. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Claws is the next movie I wanted to talk about. Right, That's Claus. going right into S tier. I watched it the whole way through. Fucking beautiful. The animation's amazing. Everybody needs to watch it. I think it's on Netflix. Just, just, just watch it. So. And yeah, I, again. I like it no, go ahead. You know, yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna. I was just gonna say it's another movie I haven't seen. It visually doesn't really appeal, didn't really appeal to me, but I, you know, I haven't given it a chance. So I guess that's gonna go on my list to to see this this holiday. So again, I'll I'll trust your judgment here and put it on what S. 
Yeah, let's let's just put it straight to S. It deserves oh, so much recognition. It's uh, it was directed by uh, Sergio Pablos. He was a he used to be a Disney animator. He worked on films like Hercules and Tarzan. Mm. So the animation style he did was influenced by a traditional hand drawn animation. So it it looks more like, I guess I guess you would call it classic Disney kind of yeah. like feel. So I think this it's it's, it's just an incredible you know, piece of animation. And I think it, it, it kind of turns the Disney, like the Santa Claus mythos upside down. And I, I think that's what people like about it. It's like Emperor's new groove without so much meta, but also like it has the heart of like, you know, a lot of Disney movies and it just mashes it all together. And it's just really fun. It's a fun movie. You gotta watch okay. it. All right. I'll put it on my list. So now we got a Christmas Carol, you know, another Robert Zemeckis, the <laughs> this was the two, the 2009 Christmas Carol. I know there's a bunch of Christmas carols. This is 2009 Christmas Carol, where Jim Carrey also plays Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of voice actors in this one. Actually, I I think it's uh, definitely cannot be understated. We have Gary Oldman. Uh, we have Colin Firth. We have Bob Hoskins. This was one of Bob Hoskins' last movies before you know he passed away. And it's just that uh, we we have a good voice cast. And it's just the same fucking story. Like, I don't know what, what anybody expects from <laughs> Christmas Carol. I mean, you can't really do that much with it. You could, you can make it, or you could, you could turn it around, make it something different. I think this one, it does kind of go along with the whole idea. It's just, oh, it has the same a animation style that you probably don't, that's probably ugly. But this was in 2009. So, you know, it looks a little bit better than what it looked like in the Polar Express. So we, we got to give it some props. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing it in school and. Yeah, it, this was visually, your this was your Polar Express. This was your Polar <laughs> Express. <laughs> visually, yeah, it's it was much better than Polar Express, but yeah, I mean, it portrayed the story kind of accurately, um, you know, to to children. <laughs> so yeah, I probably put it. I probably put it in A. This is gonna be above. What is this going to be above? Above oh, yeah. Polar Express. Above um, the Santa Claus Two. Santa Claus. Oh shit! Now nah, you know what? Put Santa Claus Two in A, and they will drop Christmas Carol to 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 B. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, Arthur Christmas. Uh, directed by Sarah Smith. Uh, they used a combination of CGI and traditional stop motion because the company that made Arthur Christmas is also uh, the ones who made, you know, Wallace and Gromit, those stop motion animations. Uh, it's Ardman Animations. I think they worked with Sony Pictures Animation. So they kind of, it was kind of like a joint venture. So yeah, yeah. very good movie. It has a lot more to do with family. I think that's what I like about this movie. It's about family, lineage, and understanding of, you know, one's place, you know, in a family, you know, whether you're the older brother, younger brother. So I think this one really does speak to me. And I think this was a very, very good, you know, like, I think it, it, it had a better conflict because I think they could have easily made like this a very by the numbers Christmas movie because it's about like a bunch of like uh, the Santa Claus family where it's like, oh, yeah, the Santa, yeah. he, he doesn't want to give away his fucking seat. And so the older brother is kind of pissed. He's more about technology. And then the other brother's like, "Oh, I'm I'm more about the uh, the joys of the traditional spirits. Christmas." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they have the old old Santa, where he's like, "Oh yeah, we used to freaking go by sleigh, and you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not on this yeah. giant UFO." <laughs> yeah, so, with cloaking, cloaking device. Yeah, yeah, with cloaking capabilities <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and drone strikes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, no, I, I want to say this would probably be, be a fairly good A, you know, rank-wise. Yeah. I, I would put it a solid B, actually. Really? Yeah. No, so how about we just no put I it... disagree. If, if, if you're going to put this on the no, if you're going to put this on the chart, it better be A. I swear to God, it better be A. I'm putting it in between. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rise of the Guardians this is our next one. It's... Yeah, directed by Peter Ramsey, who, guess what, ended up uh, being one of the directors for Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, so, what? I know. It, he, 
I think this interpretation it's just if you if you ever want to see a bunch of holidays as Avengers, that's pretty much it. It is more of a Christmas movie though because Jack there's Jack Frost and you know Santa Claus. They spend Santa a lot Claus, of time yeah. in like the North Pole area, and then they have the elves and stuff like that. So I would consider this a holiday movie in terms of Christmas, but I think it it, it does capture the belief the you know the understanding of you know believing and whatever you know believing in things that don't exist and blah 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 but it's got a solid action it's got a solid voice cast i mean come on you uh, of course they're gonna have hugh jackman as the fucking easter bunny so that's great <laughs> yeah, but yeah. uh it's it, it's i think overall the uh, everything is pretty solid the lore is fun it's based off of uh, an actual you know adaptation of a book you know, also called Rise of the Guardians, which it doesn't follow it very closely, but I think what what it has, it, it's pretty fun. It's pretty solid. Uh, it, I guess B. I guess B would be good for Rise of the Guardians. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I would actually put it in A. Rise of the Guardians? You've seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I like the story. The visuals are good. The, the story... Uh, pretty good so i mean i I probably put it above uh arthur arthur nah. christmas so no i really disagree why. i think this is as far as i'm aware of this is probably a good b b tier christmas movie i wouldn't want people to watch this thinking it's going to be a holiday christmas movie i think it'd be, it's more of a more of a b i mean it does christmas. doesn't it end up taking place in uh Winter slash Christmas or well, no? Yeah, no. again, Jack Frost has the ability to control snow, so of course this is going to have more of a holiday feel to it. But I don't know. I just think uh, not all of it kind of kind of stayed together. And if we're if, from all the movies that we have ranked, I think B is a fair assessment. Otherwise, I would have okay. went with C. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll put it in B. So which one are what are you what are you going to put it at now? All right. We'll put it in B. All right. And then this is our last movie, in this case, Last Christmas. 2019's Last Christmas, directed by Paul Feig, Feig of uh, Ghostbusters, what was it, 2019 Ghostbusters? Yeah, so, Amelia Clark is in this. Uh, I remember watching this on Netflix, I just thought, oh, this is going to be a regular, romantic, holiday Christmas movie, you know, boy, boy meets girl. Hallmark it Christmas gets, movie. <laughs> <laughs> it gets crazy. Like, did you th- like when you hear a movie called Last Christmas? You just think of the song, you know, Last Christmas. You know, so I was like, okay, it's gonna be exactly how I expect it to be. There sh- should not be any freaking punchlines or anything. No, apparently this has to do with grief, loss, and just overall, you know, the w- weirdest kinds of emotions with like, you know. In you know that you could feel. I did not expect to think. Oh, if somebody give was my heart donor, I I'm gonna see them as a ghost. Because it turns out the the guy the the freaking uh, the guy that she he ends up she ends up with turns out he's a ghost. That's the whole movie. It's it's mm. uh it's the fight. It's Fight Club the movie. The whole time that she is talking to somebody. She's not actually talking to somebody. And whenever they do a movie like that, you have to you start thinking about all the times she is talking by herself or she is at a di- at the table with somebody else there. It's just in- incredible. It's it's just ridiculous. I'm like, "What the hell is going on?" So this threw me through a loop. I I don't even know if I could recommend this movie, but it's it's just incredible how it ended up something like this. So, and of course, it took t- imagine Casing your entire movie on a freaking song, George Michael's "Last <laughs> Christmas." It's, 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 it's unreal. I, it's just like you wanted this to be as simple as it could be, but it's not. It's not even cute. It's it's just it's fucking weird. So let's let's just put this one at C. If, if yeah. you're ready to watch something crazy uh, on a fucking you know on the holidays, maybe watch it with your girlfriend or your wife. Watch this because it'll it starts getting fucking hilarious and crazy by the end, and it's just like. I did not see that coming, so did not think that one through. Yeah, I would, I would put it a solid C. Yeah. So this is part one. We will do part two next week. Hope everybody has a happy holiday that they'll have so far. So have a great one. <laughs>